the cattlemen have been running cattle in the bush for 150 years plus. So the Brumbies naturally go to the salt camps that the cattle go to. Um, if you want to catch a number of Brumbies, or big numbers, you've got to put the salt where they go. You can't just go and put salt anywhere and think you're going to catch big numbers of horses, which is happening now. Like it's, it's like they really don't want to catch a lot of them. And they're not yarding the areas where the main population is. The local knowledge should be used a lot more if they want to catch the numbers and get them taken out. And the local people have got places to put them, home them. The people up here used to take a lot of horses out of the bush. But now it's sort of getting taken over and, you know, all the rules and regulations and that, which you've got to have. But I think that should be a local job. If, if you're based out of here, trapping the horses, it's very cost efficient. To do the job properly, what Parks Victoria and you know, everyone wants. Well, you've got the animal lovers on one side, the horse lovers, and then you've got the Parks Victoria on the other. So it's, you're never going to make everyone happy. But I think if you impact and catch a lot of horses out of the main areas where they're getting seen all the time, with the salt yards, um, I think that would probably make everyone a fair bit happier. Running down and roping is a good method as well, but there's not as many people really catching numbers like there used to be. Um, so instead of three or four hundred horses a year getting taken out of, say, the Eastern Alps side, you know, there's probably only a hundred now. And with the yarding, I know you could take out three or four hundred easy enough, done properly, cost efficiently. You've got to have somewhere to put these horses when you take them out, rehome them, like we give a lot of weight to kids. Um, I've given heaps of weight to kids over the years and other people that want a horse, but um, a lot of the young ones do make great kids' ponies and little stock horses. Over the last five or six years in Benambra, Omeo, Swiss Creek, ANSA area, um, Australian Wool Board, Parks, um, DPI, we've been running a big baiting program for because we have so much trouble up here, you know, and they've spent so much money doing this, and, you know, the farmers have been doing a damn good job, got the wild dog levels down to a fairly good level. Now they're going to go and shoot a heap of horses in the bush. The, the, the wild dog numbers will explode again and all that money that they've put into the last six or seven years up here it's just gone to waste, hasn't it? They don't look at that side of it, I'm sure. So I think the horses should be trap yarded and taken out of the bush so that there's not dead carcasses laying everywhere feeding all the ferals. The wild pigs, yeah, they are really pushing through from the snowy and we're starting to shoot them in the paddocks here at Banambra now. So, I don't know, we don't want them here either, but having rotten carcasses lying around the bush everywhere doesn't help that. So, it's going to make them breed up. 25 years ago, there was hardly any deer here and it was only really since the 2003 bushfires that they sort of come through and exploded. Um, they do do a fair bit of damage, but they go into a lot of country where horses and that don't go so, but they do bring a lot of problems with them. Like I learned off old cattlemen that used to catch Brumbies, like the Conleys and the Murphys and you know, then great cattlemen like come into the country and yeah, they run hundreds of cattle, they had horses. We learned a lot of stuff off them. It's, it's part of the history, like I was 14 year old when I caught my first Brumby and um, you know, I've caught yeah, a lot now, and I want my children to be able to do it. But the way the system's starting to go, it's like they don't want you out there at all, you know, they don't want us, the, if we go out there, go for a ride or catch a Brumby, you know, they want to book us for it or, I don't know, it's, it's like a dying, just a dying art. So, yeah. yeah, I've been hurt a few times. Um, always try and look after my riding horses pretty well. I don't like them getting hurt which they don't very often because they're good horses. But um, yeah, I've hurt myself pretty bad a few times, but I've always come out of it. Ran down and roped 964 Brumbies. And when I was 14 year old and I caught my first one on Nunnio, my 964th Brumby still felt the same. It's a big thrill. It's just, yeah, it's hard to explain, but it's a thrill. Some of the people I've rode with are the best Brumby runners. You know, they've got the numbers. It's proven, so. Here we've got Peter Sandy, Ken Conley, you know. Ken, the legend, best 
I think I've caught the second, I'm second to him in numbers. Then we got Dean Backman, we had Dean Pendergast, superstar, but yeah, he's not here now. Um, Tom, he's an up and coming rider. He rides very well. He probably, you know, he's ridden, he's ridden with some pretty damn handy blokes. I've got my kids up and coming. You know, my 13 year old daughter, God, I can't keep her off a horse, you know, she just wants to catch Brumby, she just wants to do stuff, so what a great, you know, it's better than the sitting down the street buggerising around with a phone, isn't it, like she's riding around, learning stuff, history, well I've seen Ken catch a lot of horses, I rode with him a lot over the years, I've seen him roaring, you know, roaring to a fresh Melbourne to throw the rope, you know, he could throw a rope pretty well, being an old rodeo fella, you know, and then you'd watch him. He'd be really having the smoke burning off that rope because the uh, horse is big and strong and fresh. Yeah, I've seen him lose the odd rope. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, Ken was a great mountain man. Um, really good horseman, great bushman. You could just, you could, he could live out the bush with nothing. Any publicity is good publicity, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> so he didn't care if he was in, in trouble or on top of the world. He. Uh, he lived life to the fullest. I was with Ken Conley. And we were on the Bogongs in about three foot of snow. It was cold, foggy. Um, we had all our cattle dogs with us. And they started barking and we thought they were on a mob of Brumbies. Next minute there's a great Samba stag there. I said to Ken, I'm gonna catch this. Never really seen deer much back then. And he says, oh, I don't know how you'll go with it. So anyway, I got a big dally. Dogs at him bailed up and I ran in, I threw the rope on him. Well, that was, yeah, not like catching a Brumby. <laughs> it was like a marlin on a surf reel. 